I moved into a new house about three or four months ago, and my house was built in the 1990s. Back in the 1990s, Ethernet was not something that was typically wired into a home. That's sort of more recently built homes have Ethernet already sort of pre-wired into most rooms. But back in the 1990s, they did have coaxial cable, and that's what I have. So almost every single one of my rooms has a coaxial cable connection that was wired down to a central location in my garage. So there's a technology called Mocha, which allows you to basically convert the coaxial connection into ethernet. And to do that, you need a Mocha adapter. Having Mocha adapters around your house is a way to allow you to utilize your existing coaxial wiring to supplement your ethernet network. So if you look at this device here, this is the uh, Translite Global uh, TLMC84 Mocha 2.5 uh, adapter. And uh, this comes in a two pack, or at least mine was a two pack. It's 179 bucks for two of these. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and set this up. I'm also gonna show you basically how to wire this thing into a home that has existing coaxial wiring. But if you look at this device, it's very simple. So you've got coax in and out. Then you've got another coaxial connection that's labeled Mocha. That's basically for sort of the Mocha network itself. And then this has essentially two gigabit ports as well that function as basically a gigabit switch in the back of this device. You also have a little reset hole. Uh, it's powered by five volt micro USB. It does come with the power adapter to power it. And then you've got a physical on off button. These things are relatively plug and play. And the reason that I picked this version of Mocha adapter over any of the other ones that you can find out on Amazon is because it's very highly rated. This is a 4.7 out of five stars. The price is right in line with all of the other Mocha adapters that are out there. And uh, yeah, it seemed like it was a super easy one to set up. It's also Mocha 2.5 which is backwards compatible with existing Mocha 2.0 and 1.1 networks uh, or devices, I should say. And uh, 2.5 basically just allows you to utilize a little bit more bandwidth than the previous versions. Uh, granted though, I don't really need this for much bandwidth. I just need it for a switch in the garage that's gonna probably have an access point, maybe a couple of cameras hanging off of it. So it doesn't need to have a ton of bandwidth, but uh, in my speed test, so far, it's got plenty. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and jump into step number one, which is how exactly should you wire this into your home? Let's take a look at how the Mocha adapters should be wiring into your existing home's coaxial network, for lack of a better term. Uh, do not pay any attention to the push-pull rod and the wiring that I've got hanging down right here. That is for a completely separate video. If you guys are interested in seeing how I am retrofitting this 1990s home with up-to-the-date uh, Ethernet and whatnot, make sure you subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more videos like this. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at CrosstalkSOL, where I do regular updates on these types of projects. Okay, so... Let's take a look at what we're working with. Here is the most simple setup that you can do for a point-to-point -point Mocha network. What are we looking at here? The black lines are my coaxial connections. The blue lines are my LAN connections, okay? So what I have here is uh, Comcast business class internet coming in to my garage, right? So there's a place where all of the coaxial connections in my house terminate, and that is a little box in my garage. So Comcast delivers service to there. Previously, it was just sort of um, spliced down in that box or sort of coupled down in that box directly up to my office to this Comcast modem, which is sitting right below my printer here. So what I did here first is I disconnected that connection and I ran the Comcast connection from the outside world into the in outside of the Mocha adapter. If you look at the back of the Mocha adapter, you've got two coaxial plugs. One says in out, right? Basically when you're connecting coax together, no matter how many different locations of coaxial connections you have, they're essentially one big bucket, right? It's one big network, much like if you plugged a whole bunch of ethernet cables into a switch. So 
the in out basically either means in from your service provider or out to like a cable modem or out to a TV if you are using cable TV in your house. The, the setup that I'm doing here, it doesn't matter. Like you look here and it says Comcast modem, but that could also be a television in a bedroom or something like that, right? So the out can go wherever it needs to go out for Comcast's equipment, not my own ethernet switches and whatnot. This is for Comcast's equipment. In this case, it's the Comcast modem, but again, that could also be like a set-top DVR box for a cable television or for, you know, for cable TV. Okay, so we're coming into the in-out side, which is if you're looking at the device, it's the one closest to the edge of the adapter. And then from there, we go out over here up to my office. So this is the existing wiring that runs through the walls of my house and comes up here and terminates in my office. If you go back to the garage here, I also then have a LAN cable. This isn't set up yet. I'm gonna set this up as part of this video. There's a LAN cable that comes out to a switch in my garage, which then I can use to power up, you know, an access point or a couple of cameras, whatever I'm gonna do down in the garage, this is what I wanna provide uh, LAN connectivity to. So coming back to my office, we went from the Mocha side of the Mocha adapter over to the Mocha side or the coaxial connection labeled Mocha uh, of the second Translite Global Mocha adapter. And then from there, we go out to the Comcast modem. Okay, so this provides internet connectivity all the way through, internet to into the first adapter, out over to the second adapter through the Mocha ports, and then again out to the Comcast modem, which then of course has ethernet that goes into the WAN side of my PFSense firewall, which then we can connect out from the LAN side of the PFSense over to a network switch. The office Mocha adapter is also connected out to, the, that, to that network switch. And so now this gives us essentially two different networks. We've got the cable or coaxial network from the internet through to my Comcast modem. Then we have my LAN network, which comes from the Comcast modem into my firewall, into my switch, into this office Mocha adapter, through the coaxial connection to the garage Mocha adapter, and then out to a switch on the, uh, on the other side. So that's extending my network through the Mocha adapter down into the garage. This, however, is a very simple setup, but there is a glaring problem with this setup. And the problem is, if I lose power, for instance, if you turn off the Mocha adapter, or if there's a power outage, or if one of these devices fails, this is not a passive connection through the Mocha adapter, okay? So if the power is off on the Mocha adapter, your internet connection is severed. Okay, so that's a problem. We don't wanna do that because while I have a backup battery, a UPS sitting up here in my office, I don't have a UPS in my garage. So if the Mocha adapter in my garage gets shut off or powered down for any reason, power outage or someone just trips the cable or a circuit breaker trips or whatever, I'm gonna lose internet to the whole house, okay? And I don't want to do that. I don't wanna rely on these Mocha adapters to be a point of failure in my internet connection. What can you do to mitigate that problem? You can use coaxial splitters. So what I have here is this split setup. This is actually how I have this wired in my house currently. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Internet comes through coaxial, and then we hit the in port of a two-way coaxial splitter. Basically, it takes one input and then has two outputs. But you can scale that, right? So you can have one input and four outputs to multiple other Mocha adapters if you want. So we're splitting this into one side goes to this Mocha adapter here, the Mocha port or the Mocha labeled coaxial connection on the Mocha adapter. And the other side goes over up to through my house's wiring and the walls via coax to a second coaxial splitter up here in my office. That second coaxial splitter, again, splits it out into the Mocha side of the Mocha adapter, and then the second connection comes to the Comcast modem. So essentially, we have effectively created two separate coaxial networks here. We have one that delivers my internet all the way through this splitter, through the walls to the splitter upstairs, and then to my Comcast modem. And then we have a separate network that comes from Mocha adapter number one 
into the splitter, through the walls to my office upstairs, and then into Mocha Adapter 2. Okay, so we're basically separating out two different, you know, quote unquote networks on a, basically a single set of wires. From there, everything else is exactly the same. The LAN side of the network is identical. We're coming out of the Comcast modem into my firewall, then the LAN side of the firewall hits a switch and then hits the Mocha adapter, goes through the coaxial into the second, into the downstairs Mocha adapter, out the LAN port into uh, a switch and then out to a camera access point, whatever I'm gonna be powering up down in the garage. So this is a much better setup because I don't want to rely on the Mocha adapter to be powered on because, you know, the connection here is just this like little micro USB 5 volt connection. It's like one of those, you know, USB powered uh, power cables that are so popular these days. I don't want to have to rely on that for my entire internet connection for the house. So we are basically bypassing the Mocha adapters and whether these are powered on or not, like if I lose power to this Mocha adapter, the connection to my garage via the LAN will be severed, but my internet connection will actually still work just fine. So if you're gonna be doing this in your own home, I highly recommend investing in a couple of coaxial splitters. They're just a couple bucks. And by the way, I have all of the equipment that I used in this video linked down below if you would like to purchase. Those are Amazon affiliate links. And that doesn't change your price at all, but it does get Crosstalk Solutions a couple bucks for the referral. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate absolutely every referral that we get. Okay, so let's go downstairs and take a look at how I physically wired things from my garage. Then we'll take a look at up here. We're gonna run some speed tests. And then I also wanna get that switch and the UVC G4 bullet camera uh, hooked up to the side of the house. Here's what I'm dealing with down in the garage. So this cable in the back, this black cable that comes up and around into this sort of uh, filter here, this is what comes in from Comcast. So Comcast terminates right here. Now this used to connect directly over to this coaxial line labeled office. This was plugged directly into the bottom of this filter. So what I did here is I got a new line off of the filter and then up into the inside of this coaxial splitter. From the coaxial splitter, we go out to the office, and then the second connection comes out over here, around, and into the Mocha adapter. Now I've got the one upstairs disconnected right now, so you can see there is no Mocha light, but once this is actually connected and communicating successfully, you will have a light where it says Mocha, and that's how you can tell that everything's working just fine. All right, so the next thing that I need to do is put my switch in. I'm just gonna terminate it right here above this box so that I can basically run network cables wherever I need to in the garage. All right, up in my office, I have reconnected the Mocha adapter up here. Again, pardon the mess, this is for a separate project that I'm working on. From downstairs in the garage, this is where my Comcast connection comes in, or this is the connection from the splitter downstairs. So we're coming out of the wall into a secondary splitter here. And then this is split. This black cable goes off to my Comcast cable modem. And then this white coaxial cable goes over here to the Mocha adapter. And as you can see, we're only using the Mocha side connection. We have our LAN plugged in here. And then since we are now connected downstairs, we have a light that says Mocha and it's uh, registering some activity there. All right, down here in my garage, I have everything plugged in. The switch is connected to Unify. I have a bullet camera that is plugged into the switch and connected to Unify Protect. Let's run a couple of speed tests here. So first and foremost, my speed out to the internet uh, looks like it's about 95 megabits down and about 40 megabits up. So I'm getting full upload speed, but I'm getting about one sixth of the download speed that I should be getting. Now, how does that compare to iPerf? I have iPerf running upstairs on my main computer in server mode. We're gonna run a client test on this side and let's see what we get. So we're getting about the same amount of bandwidth. We're getting about 95 megabits through the coaxial connection. 
And again, that is perfectly fine by me because all I need is maybe one access point, maybe two cameras. So we're talking about, you know, five to 10 megabits maximum that I'm gonna need down here in the garage. 90 megabits is more than enough. One other thing that I wanted to show was that these devices, these Mocha devices do have their own onboard GUI. So let's go ahead and log into the Mocha device and configure it for a static IP address on my main LAN. By default, so we're gonna change my IP address on this computer. So we're gonna right click on ethernet, we're gonna do properties, we're gonna go into IPv4, and then we're gonna manually set an IP address. The default IP address of these Mocha adapters is 192.168.144.200. So I'm gonna set my computer into that same network. I'm gonna say 192.168.144.anything's fine. We'll say 199. And we're just gonna say okay and okay. And now I don't have internet anymore, but I should be able to log into the Mocha adapter at 192.168.144.200. And there we go. Default password is admin admin. And here we go. Now, I don't know much about the coaxial stuff that we're seeing here in this interface. I'm basically leaving everything default, except I'm gonna change two things. I'm gonna set the administrative password to something different, and I'm gonna set the device onto my LAN with a static IP address. So first, let's go to security settings. Old password is admin, and new password we're gonna to set to something strong, and save that. And next, let's go over to device settings, and we can see here that it's statically set right now to 192.168.144.200. Let's go ahead and change that. We're gonna change it. Uh, I set the first Mocha adapter to 200.23. We're gonna set this one to 200.24 on my network, give it a gateway, and hit save. Now, the network settings on these Mocha adapters don't apply automatically. You have to reboot the device. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reboot the device and reboot, okay. And while this is rebooting, we're gonna set my computer back into my main LAN network, and then we should be able to connect to this Mocha adapter on uh, 192.168.200.24 when it comes back up. Obviously, if you are setting this for your own LAN, make sure you match your own LAN, your own LAN subnet and don't use mine. All right, here we go, everything's back up. I'm logged back into the Mocha adapter at the new IP address of 192.168.200.24 and it had my new admin password to log in. All right, last thing we're gonna do here, let's double check the camera in Unify Protect. Here's my U4, uh, UVC G4 bullet and it looks like the picture's coming through just perfectly. Uh, we're gonna change it to 24 FPS and apply that change. And if we look in here, it does say that the link state of the UVC G4 bullet is one gigabit per second. Uh, let's see if we can bring up the live view here. All right, here's the live view. I have it set to 1440p, and let's, uh, let's kind of wait for a car to drive by or something so that we can uh, just make sure that everything's working fine. All right, here we can see my neighbor pulling out of their driveway. And so, yeah, this is a pretty solid feed through the Mocha connection. Certainly good enough. Uh, this is, you know, 1440p video. Certainly going to be plenty good enough. Another car driving by there. Hi, how's it going? All right, so there you have it. A look at Mocha 2.5 and these Mocha adapters that I got off of Amazon. Everything's working perfectly. And again, 90 megabits through my house to my garage is plenty of bandwidth for the stuff that I need to do. What are your experiences with Mocha? Have you guys set this up? Are there any things that I missed? Is there something that I should be doing as far as settings inside the device or something like that? Let me know down in the comments below. That'll be helpful not only to me, but to anyone else who's watching this video. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris, the Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.